What's going on everyone? This draft got on here now today. We have our 2019 NBA draft grades. Of course, the draft was last night. Very exciting. Very happy about Sekou Dumbuya joining my Detroit Pistons. I thought that was an excellent selection by us. I'm going to go through all 30 teams, every single pick, as many trades as I can go through, and grade it all. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. So in my NFL draft grades, I probably gave maybe seven or eight teams lower than a B minus, which is not a lot. And I think in basketball, I was definitely a little bit more harsher. I think a lot of teams made bigger mistakes. So without further ado, we're going to start with the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm giving them a C plus, which is basically eh, not great, but it could have been worse. I would say B minus is probably average for me. I know most people think of like C as average, but I would say maybe a B minus. Like, I don't view C as a good thing. And it's, it wasn't a bad draft for Philadelphia. It just wasn't a particularly good one. So they traded up to get Matisse Tybel out of Washington. I thought that was a solid pick for them. I'm giving it a B plus. He was number 30 on my board, so it's not a total reach. They did move up to him. They moved up four spots and gave Boston a high second round pick, which I don't think was great value, but I do think it was worth it to get Tybal, who is an, an excellent defender, the best one in this draft class. And in playoff time, you need guys who can defend, and this Sixers team is a contender in the Eastern Conference, so I think Tybal will be a good fit and contribute right away. Then, they entered the day with four second-round picks, and they turned pretty much all of those into future second-round picks and cash. They did keep one in which they took Mariel Shayok from Iowa State. He's a decent player, but he's nothing special. I'm giving that a C-. And then trades overall, I'm giving it a C. I don't think they made a ton of great trades. They didn't make any awful trades, but I think they could have capitalized on value more. So all around, pretty meh draft for Philadelphia. I'm going to give the Boston Celtics a B plus. I don't think they had a home run draft, but I do think they did a very nice job last night, starting with the 14th pick via the Kings or the Sixers from trades a while back. They took Romeo Langford out of Indiana. I think that's an excellent pick. I'm giving it an A. Romeo is number 11 on my personal board, and I think this is very nice value for him. He's a very high-ceiling player in Boston. I feel like needs a high-ceiling player. They had three first-round picks and ended up with two, but three first-round picks to work with, so it makes sense if you're going after a high-ceiling player in Romeo Langford. And then with one of their other first-rounders, they got Grant Williams out of Tennessee. He's a very high-floor, low-ceiling guy, extremely productive with Tennessee. So I think that's a solid pick. I'm giving it a B. On to round two. They got that pick in part of the Philadelphia deal. And the first rounder they got from the Sixers, they shipped off to the Phoenix Suns for a future first round pick. Aaron Baines was also part of that deal. And they took Carson Edwards out of Purdue, one of the more flashier prospects in this year's draft. This is about, I would say, fair range for him, given that an A minus. Point guard is likely going to be in need this offseason, with Kyrie likely gone and Terry Rozier as a giant question mark. So Carson Edwards can contribute right away. And then with pick 51, they went with another point guard in Tremont Waters, who I don't particularly love, but he's not a bad player. So I'm going to give it a B minus, or a B actually. And then trades, I thought they did a pretty nice job giving it a B plus. Could have done better, could have done worse, but all around, pretty good draft for Boston. For the New York Knicks, I'm going to give them an A minus. I thought it was a pretty good draft for them. Starting with the third pick, they went with R.J. Barrett, definitely the right selection. He was number two on my board ahead of John Morant, just barely, but he was nonetheless. And then they traded up to get pick 47. I don't think it was a great trade. I think they gave up a little bit too much. But they got Iggy Brazdekettis. I've never learned how to say that last name yet. I'm giving it a B plus. I think that's a solid pick. He's pretty good scorer, pretty productive this year as a freshman with Michigan. He was number 49 on my board, so... Pretty fair value for him. And then, as I said, I think they did give up a little bit too much. I think they gave a couple of future seconds as well as some cash. So I might not have that totally right, but I think they did give up a second or two, which is a little bit too much moving up eight spots, in my opinion. Now onto the Brooklyn Nets. I'm going to give them a C+. Not great, not awful. They traded out of their first-round selection, pick 27, 
to basically get a future pick in cap space from the Clippers. And I'm giving that a C because I just don't think they need cap space. Yes, they want to go after Kyrie Irving, but I don't think they should. I think they should just re-sign D'Angelo Russell and not tempt themselves with someone like Kyrie Irving. Now, if that cap space turns into maybe Tobias Harris on close but not a max contract and they bring back D'Lo, then maybe it works out. Maybe even Jimmy Butler, but I just don't think they should go after Kyrie Irving. So if they're getting cap space for him, that's why I'm giving that trade so low. If it weren't for that, then sure, I'd give that probably an A- minus or something, but... I just don't think they should go after Kyrie, which definitely hurts their grade. Then in the second round, pick 31, they got Nick Claxton from Georgia, who was number 31 on my board, so good value. And then Jalen Hands out of UCLA at 56. Never lived up to the hype. Very athletic, very explosive player, but just wasn't super productive. Fringe guy for me, but he was not in my top 60. I don't think it's a bad pick, but definitely not a great one. It was a very quiet night for the defending champion Toronto Raptors as they only had one pick going into it, which was pick 59. They stuck with it, and they went with big man Dewan Hernandez from Miami. I'm giving it a C. Wasn't on my top six. He wasn't really on my radar. Not a bad player, but not anyone who I think really excites me. I think the Raptors should have just maybe gotten some future second round picks because they don't really need him right now. So, all around... I wouldn't be upset if I was a Raptors fan because, A, they just want to want a ring, and, two, this is pick 59, but I also wouldn't be jumping up for joy until they re-sign Kawhi. While the Milwaukee Bucks didn't do anything last night, they made a trade on Wednesday night, and I am counting that. That's pretty much their entire grade, pretty much. So they got John Lure from my Pistons for Tony Snell and the 30th selection. I think that's a really bad trade for Milwaukee. They're giving up a first-round pick, plus Tony Snell, who I think is the better player. Now, Snell is on a bigger contract, but he's only making maybe $3 million more this season. Yes, Snell is under contract for another year, or he's under contract for two more years, whereas John Lure is for one, but the Bucks need cap space right now, not next summer. So, I don't really get it. Yes, the Bucks are probably losing Nico Miritich and could use a stretch four, but John Lohr shot 9% from three this past season, so I just don't think he's a great player. I never really liked him when he was on the Pistons, and I am very happy that we made that trade. This is the third straight season that the Chicago Bulls got the seventh overall pick, and I think for the third straight year, they should be pretty happy. Kobe White out of North Carolina, him, Wendell Carter, uh, Lowry Markkinen, and Zach Levine is a really nice foursome with Otto Porter. I think the Bulls have an extremely bright future. White was number seven on my board, so fair value. And then in the second round, Daniel Gafford out of Arkansas, number 10 on my board to begin the season. Entering last night, he fell to number 42, so he really did not do himself a favor by staying in school in another season, but he's going on a team that could use some depth at center. Robin Lopez probably won't be back next year. I don't even know if he finished out the year on the Bulls, so all around, nice draft for Chicago. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm going to give them a C plus. Definitely not a great draft for them, in my opinion. Pick five, they got the point guard out of Vanderbilt, Darius Garland. I think he's a tad bit overrated. Number 10 on my personal big board. And they already have Colin Sexton, who's the legit only building block for the future. Now, I think Garland can play the two. He has a nice shooting stroke. Not a great playmaker, so it's not like... Oh, you have to play him at the one because he's such a good passer. And I think he can play the two, but he's never really played it there. So I feel like someone like Jared Culver or even Cameron Reddish would have been a better selection there. Pick 26, Dylan Windler. A lot of people think he's a sleeper. I disagree. Number 55 on my big board. So I'm really not a huge fan of him. He is a solid shooter. Can grab boards. Pretty good scorer. But I just don't think he's a great NBA prospect. And then pick 30. If you told me 24 hours ago Kevin Porter Jr. would be the 30th pick, I would be thrilled, but that's because I would assume that the Pistons owned that selection. We did trade it to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, four second-round picks is a lot for the 30th selection, which is why I'm giving the trades a C. However, four second-rounders for Kevin Porter Jr., who's number 14 on my board, 
That is not too much. The pick itself gets an A+. Plus. Excellent move right there from the Cavaliers. Kevin Porter Jr., one of my favorite prospects in this year's draft. I got to see him play live like a year ago, and he can absolutely jump out of the gym. That man has hops. He was... He showed a ton of flashes this year of USC, and I would have been thrilled with him for my Pistons at 15, let alone 30. One of the biggest winners in the draft, in my opinion, is the Indiana Pacers. Starting with pick 18, they went with the big man, Goga Bitadze, from the Republic of Georgia. I think that's a very nice selection. Yes, they don't need a big man, but apparently they're trading Sabonis, which I don't get that at all. I think he's a great player, but... Just talent alone, he was one of the highest players on my board. I think number three at the time, probably behind Bull Bull and Kevin Porter Jr. So, definitely good value, number 15 overall. So, I think this is a very nice value selection for Indiana. I think he's good enough to play in the NBA right away and not be stashed in Europe. Very solid potential, especially on the offensive end of the floor. Has a nice jump shot and is a decent defender. And then in the second round, they definitely won this draft. So a few hours before the draft, it was announced that they traded cash to the Suns for TJ Warren and pick 32. That is the steal of the draft, and it's not even a draft pick. TJ Warren is on a team-friendly contract for the next couple years. He can slide right in at small forward. He is a starting caliber player. Phenomenal move for the Pacers. I don't know what the Suns were thinking all day. They just had an awful, awful, miserable draft for the Suns, and the Pacers just absolutely fleeced them. And then with that 32nd pick, it was Casey Akpala, who I do like, first round grade on, but he's going to the Miami Heat for more second round picks. So TJ Warren and multiple future second round picks for cash. I, I don't know what to say about that. That's just phenomenal. Very solid draft for my Detroit Pistons, starting with the number 15 pick, Sekou Domboya from France, number two player on the board at the time behind Bull Bull, who obviously dropped huge risk, so I probably could not have been happier with the selection, as Domboya has so much potential, I would not mind keeping him in Europe for a year or two, I think he's extremely raw, and i don't think he's ready for the NBA game. We saw Frank Nidakina, another French prospect, come in right away. Definitely did not work for the Knicks. Personally, I think he will play for his year one. I kind of hope he doesn't, but I think he will. A player who I do not think will play for his year one, Davida Servitas from Lithuania, I want to say. We traded two second round picks to move up eight spots with Dallas. I think that's pretty bad value for us. However, I think Servietis is a decent player, number 53 on my board, which does seem like a reach, but in the second round, it's not awful, B-. minus. And then pick 57, we traded a future second rounder in cash to the 76ers, I believe, to get Jordan Bone, one of my biggest sleepers in this year's draft. I really like Jordan Bone. He was my number one point guard in the class, not including the big three of John Morant, Kobe White, and Darius Garland. Other than those three, he was my number one, number four at the position overall, number 36 on my big board, so I really like him. Extremely athletic, grinder, hustler, productive at Tennessee, really like that selection. And then all trades, I think an A is a little bit generous, I'd say more like an A- minus or B+. Plus. Already talked about the Tony Snell trade, I think that was great. Trading 30 for four second rounders, I really like. Even though it was Kevin Porter Jr., and I'd rather Kevin Porter Jr. than all those picks. Still, getting four twos is very solid. And then we traded, I think, three of those second rounders to help us get Servietis and Jordan Bone. I would have liked to have held on to more of those second round picks. I would have rather have just stayed at 45 and get someone like Isaiah Roby, who I have a higher grade on than Servietis, and then keep those second round picks. As we do not have a lot of future second round picks, so I'm happy we got them but I think we could have done a better job of managing them. But overall, I am pretty happy with our draft. The Atlanta Hawks will also be getting an A-. minus. Of course, they moved up from 8 to 4. They also traded pick 17 and a protective Cavs first-round pick next year, which is a lot. But DeAndre Hunter would not be on the board at 8. Other than the big three and Bull Bull, DeAndre Hunter was my number one player on the board at the time, so I don't think it's a bad pick. 
He doesn't have a crazy high ceiling, but he has a nice floor, giving it a B plus. And then at 10, Cam Reddish. Really like that selection. Right after DeAndre Hunter on my big board, that pick gets an A. Many fans are probably questioning why they went with two small forwards. DeAndre Hunter can play the four. Cam Reddish can play the two. So just envision a lineup of Trey Young, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and whoever their long-term center is, maybe Amari Spelman, and then Kevin Herter is the sixth man. That's nasty. And then they also moved up to get pick 34 and draft Bruno Fernando. They traded two future second rounders away, which is a lot. And they also had a couple other second rounders, which they gave away for pretty much nothing. So all around, very nice draft for the Cavs. I think DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish can be very solid for the Atlanta Hawks. Pretty solid draft for the Miami Heat. I'm going to give them a B-, minus. nothing great, but I guess it could have been worse. So they took Tyler Hero at 13. Not a bad pick. He was 18 on my board. I think he's a pretty good prospect. Maybe a tad bit high, but if I was a Heat fan, I wouldn't be too mad. I'd say a B is a very reasonable grade. And then pick 32, KZ Akpala, first round grade, number 20 on my board. A- minus might honestly be a little bit harsh, but I just think he's a really talented prospect. Nice pickup for the Heat. But the reason why their grade is a B- minus and not like a B+, plus is because they made some questionable moves, giving up three future second round picks to get KZ Akpala. And pick 32 is not worth three second round picks. Maybe the player is, but the pick itself isn't, which is the same thing with the whole Kevin Porter Jr. thing. And then they drafted Bull Bull and traded him away for like a future second round pick. I think Bull Bull is worth a hell of a lot more than a future two. So the Heat did not trade well, but they drafted pretty well. Just like the Miami Heat, the Charlotte Hornets will also be receiving a B minus. Starting with pick 12, P.J. Washington, a player who I really like, sort of has flown under the radar throughout this pre-draft process, but I think he's a really solid pro. He can shoot the ball, and he can do things inside that guys like Jackson Hayes and Brandon Clark can do. Maybe he's not as athletic as them or not as good defensively, but he's pretty close, and he actually has a well-rounded offensive game, so I think he's a really solid pick. Pick 36, Kobe, Cody Martin. Yuck, I don't know what that pick is. He's not even the best player who was born at the same time as him. I think Caleb Martin's a little bit better. Cody Martin did not deserve to get picked. D minus, yuck. And then Jalen McDaniels at pick 52. Not too bad. Solid 3 and D guy. So, a few nice picks from the Hornets, but the Cody Martin one really brings it down. Oh dear, Magic fans are going to get pretty pissed off, but I'm going to give the Orlando Magic a big fat F. They had one pick, and they took Chuma Okiki with it. And prove me wrong, Chuma Okiki, prove me wrong, but that's just not a great pick. Number 57 on my board. People say he's lottery talent. I think he's late first-round talent at best, plus with an AC Altair. I just don't think that's a good pick at all. Maybe an F is a little bit harsh, but considering he went 16 and he's 57 on my board, it's pretty fair. Just not a good pick from the Orlando Magic. And he seems like a great leader, seems like a great guy. I hope he proves me wrong, but I, I, I don't think so. Washington Wizards had the definition of a B draft. Not great, but pretty good. Starting with pick 9, Rui Hachimura from Gonzaga. Maybe a tad bit high with guys like Sekou Dumboya, Cam Reddish on the board. I think it's still a solid selection. You can play the three as well as the four. Sekou and Cam are much higher risks, and Rui Hachimura has a much higher floor than both of them, so I don't think it's a bad pick. Pick 42, Admiral Schofield. They also picked up Jonathan Simmons from the Sixers, but I think Admiral Schofield is a solid pick. Number 43 on my board. Has a nice jump shot, 3 and D guy. I think he can contribute early on. And then Jonathan Simmons, eh, that's why I'm giving it a B-. He's nothing special, so all around, pretty decent draft for the Wizards. Now on to the Western Conference, starting with the Utah Jazz. Now, I am adding trades that have happened within the past couple days, like the Mike Conley one. I decided to make a grade with the Conley trade and without for both Utah and Memphis. With the Mike Conley trade for the Jazz, it's a B-, minus, but their draft itself gets a generous C. Starting with Jarrell Brantley with pick 50. He just was not supposed to get picked. They could have gone with someone a lot better, I feel like. 
Pick 53, just in right format out of Hofstra. I'm giving him a generous C+. Plus. He has a nice score, but I think that might be a little bit generous. And then pick 58, Mie Oni from Yale. A+. Plus. 38 on my board, which you're probably wondering, that's not a crazy reach. Why you give him an A+. Plus? I think Utah is a great fit for him. He can score. He can rebound. Very well-rounded player. And then I think the Mike Conley trade was excellent as well as they really did not trade anything super important, in my opinion, to get him. So this grade could be really, really bad, but Mike Conley and Mie Oni save it. I really wish I could add more pluses to the grade, but I'm just feeling a little bit lazy, as the Denver Nuggets are the clear winner of this draft. Obviously, there's multiple teams that win, but the biggest winner, without a doubt, is the Denver Nuggets. Entered the day without getting any picks, and they left it with getting Bull Bull for pretty much just a future second round pick and probably cash. That is incredible. Other than Zion, RJ, and Ja, the number one player on my board in this draft class was Bull Bull. They got him at 44, yet he was four on my board. That is insane. Obviously, Bull Bull is a huge risk. He looks like a twig. His suit was flat out awful, but obviously the durability questions are there, and he is a giant question mark. I understand that. However, he has an insanely high ceiling. I think he has almost as high, if not higher of a ceiling than Zion Williamson, which says something, and then the trade itself. I actually think they gave two second rounders away, maybe. I don't know. It was a solid trade for Denver. It wasn't great, but they got Bull Bull. Just a phenomenal pick for the Denver Nuggets. A lot of people don't like the OKC Thunder draft, and I thought it was pretty solid. They only had one pick, and I think they made a pretty good selection. Darius Baisley, he has a lot of upside. Solid defender. Doesn't get enough credit offensively. I think he's a really solid jump shooter. Pretty athletic, and he's an all-around well-rounded player. And then they actually moved down to get him. They moved down two spots, getting a future second rounder. And the guys picked between him were Brandon Clark and Grant Williams. Both of them have lower grades than Baisley. So if they, assuming they'd pick Baisley at 21, they essentially got a second round pick for three. So nice draft for Oklahoma City. Very solid draft from the Minnesota Timberwolves. I like the aggressiveness to move up and get Jarrett Culver as this Timberwolves team knows that they have a ton of flaws, and I think moving up was definitely a good idea. I would have picked Kobe White because, A, I think I had I had Kobe White one spot higher than Culver on my big board, and then, B, I really like Josh Okoge. I think he could be their long-term shooting guard. Maybe Culver moves to small forward and Andrew Wiggins is on his way out. That's certainly a possibility, but I think they needed point guard a little bit more. Culver's not a bad pick, however, so I'm giving it a B plus. And then the trade itself, they fleeced the Suns, and I'm only giving it a B plus. It wasn't like a total steal for the Timberwolves, but it was just really bad for the Suns. So I'm going to give that a B plus as well. Dario Saric is an okay player, but I would choose Jarrett Culver over Dario Saric and Cameron Johnson in a heartbeat. The Portland Trailblazers had one pick in this draft, and they made the most of it, getting this year little at pick 25. I'm giving it an A. Very nice selection for the Blazers. He was number 16 on my board. Phenomenal defender. Has some work to do offensively, and he's very raw. However, the upside is there. The athleticism is there. And I think he has a chance to be a really good player. I applaud Portland for going out and taking a risk, especially at a position of need. And this team needs help on the perimeter defensively. Damian Lillard is not much of a perimeter defender. At least he's not super good at it. Same thing can be said about C.J. McCollum. They're both more of offensive guys. So getting a defensive-oriented player on the wing, steal for Portland. Pretty solid draft for the L.A. Clippers. They're going to get a B plus. Starting off and trading up to get Fiondu Cabangele. That's how you say it. The M is silent. That's pretty good to know. I pick 27. Very nice move. He was number 19 on my board. So I think that's a pretty nice move for the Clippers, who could use some center help. Montrezl Harrell is a great player, but outside of that, their front court is somewhat weak. Then pick 48, Terrence Mann, talented wing player, number 51 on my board, so not a total reach. So the Florida State teammates reuniting, which is pretty cool. And then the trade-up to get Cabangele was a little bit much. They traded 
a few decent assets, including a first round pick away next year from somebody. I forget who. I don't. I don't know if it's their own first round pick. If it is, then that might be good because I expect the Clippers to be pretty good next year. And I think they're getting two really solid prospects, especially Calvin Gille, who is very underrated. It was a very weird draft, to say the least, for Sacramento. They did not own their first round pick because five years ago, this team was full of idiots. Now they have a bright future. And, I mean, this draft wasn't a particularly good one. Starting with pick 40, Justin James out of Wyoming. Not super familiar with him, but... With him, but I just don't think he's a great player, just looking at him from what I know. Not a super efficient three-point shooter. Productive at Wyoming, but he didn't really lead them to anything. Pick 55, they moved down and got one of my favorite players in this draft class, Kyle Guy, out of Virginia, A+. Plus. He is a first-round prospect, in my opinion, a little bit undersized to play the two, which is where I think he'll probably play in the NBA. Solid 3 and D guy, has that confidence and that mentality. A-plus selection for the Timberwolves, and then pick 60, Vanya Morkinovic from Serbia. Only Vlade Divac, right? I'm going to give it a D-plus. He's likely to be going to be a draft and stash guy, and when I read about him, he just doesn't look super impressing. And then trades, they get an A because they moved back with the Knicks, and then they still got my guy in Kyle Guy, plus a future second-round pick or two, so... All around, I think the Kyle Guy part was excellent, but other than that, not great picks in Justin James and Vanya Markanovic. So obviously the Denver Nuggets got all those A-pluses, and only one team other than the Nuggets got an A-plus, and that's the Los Angeles Lakers. I am not including the Anthony Davis trade in this grade, even though if I did, it would probably still be an A-plus, as they... Bought pick 46 from Orlando and got one of my favorite players in this year's draft, Taylor Horton Tucker. This is a phenomenal fit for the Lakers as their backcourt right now is a total disaster. And while he is more of a three, he's only six foot four. He can defend numerous positions and he can play make like a point guard. So when LeBron's not the main facilitator, it can be him. Defending multiple positions, he has a lot of similarities to Draymond Green, undersized at their position, versatile defenders, great playmakers. I think this is an excellent pick for the Lakers, and all they had to do is buy it from the Magic. So, Orlando, if you ended up picking Taylor Norton Tucker, your grade would have been a lot better than an F. I literally feel like Santa Claus right now because I gifted the Suns a D-. If I was a Suns fan, I'd be more upset than if I was a Magic fan. Even though the Magic got an F, they only messed up one time. The Suns messed up plenty of times, and the only reason why it's a D- minus is because they actually drafted a point guard in round one. So, first off, they traded TJ Warren and pick 32 for cash. Y you already heard my explanation about that. That is just plain old stupidity. Then they moved back from 6 to 11, and all they got was Dario Saric. And then they drafted Cameron Johnson. He's a great shooter, but isn't this similar, but just worse to the Macau Bridges pick last year? I had Johnson 28 on my big board. That's four spots behind Kyle Guy. So, yeah, no. And then they moved up for Ty Jerome, and he is a point guard. I don't love him. I gave it a B-. minus. We're also getting Aaron Baines, and they traded a first-rounder away next year from the Bucks which I don't think is a big deal. So they basically got Ty Jerome and Aaron Baines for pretty much like pick 28, pick 29. So that move is the saving grace here. But other than that, I feel extremely generous in giving the Suns a better grade than the Magic. I I, I just don't feel comfortable about giving them a D minus. I feel like they did worse. I feel like the Golden State Warriors needed a big draft if they wanted to legit have a good shot of making the finals and they did not really do that there's still a chance they could make it but Steph's gonna have to put that team on his back starting with pick 28 Jordan Poole out of Michigan I don't get that pick whatsoever he is number 60 on my board so he barely made it onto my top 60 pretty athletic solid shooter but he's not a first round guy and then they got Alan Smolicic from New Orleans, the Warriors are very familiar with this kid. 
giving it a C. He's not bad, but he's not great. And then they bought pick 41 to get Eric Pascal. I think that's a great fit. Pascal is a phenomenal shooter, and this Golden State Warriors team loves to space the floor, so I think he will fit right into their offense. And all trades get a C minus. I think they could have done a better job of getting those two second round picks. I think they could have traded a little bit less away, but all around, not a great draft for the Golden State Warriors, and this offseason has a decent chance of getting even worse. The Memphis Grizzlies end up getting a C plus, not including the Mike Conley trade. They get a B. So starting with pick two, John Moran, I'm giving that an A. Very nice selection. That's the pick I would have made, even though RJ Barrett was a spot higher on my board. I think that's the right pick for the Grizzlies. Then it starts to go sour. They move up two spots to get Brandon Clark. They basically gave away a second to move up. I don't think Clark would have been on the board at 23. I think there's a decent chance Boston would have taken him. And I, I, I respect them for getting their guy. But Brandon Clark is not my guy. Not high on Clark whatsoever. I graded him as an early second round prospect. Giving it a C-. minus, And that might be a little bit harsh because maybe I just expected to give whoever picked Brandon Clark a low grade. Assuming he was going to go in the teens. So I applaud those teen GMs for not taking him. And obviously the Mike Conley trade I think was horrendous for them. I think they could have gotten more for him. So if you include the Mike Conley trade, C plus, just for draft itself, it's a B. So not a great week for the Grizzlies, but Ja Morant totally saves them. Next up we have the Dallas Mavericks. They did not have a first round pick because of a Luka Doncic trade, and I don't think they're complaining that they don't have a first round pick. So starting off. With their second rounder, they moved down eight spots and got Isaiah Roby. Very solid value at 45. He was number 39 on my board. And then for trades, I gave it an A+. That does not include Luka Doncic, or else there'd be a few more pluses. But their trade with the Pistons, they got like two future seconds by moving down eight spots. That's really good value for the Mavericks. And if I was a Mavs fan, even though they don't have a first round pick, they did a really good job. So I'd be pretty happy. So a ton of the analysts are giving the Pelicans A-pluses, which I understand. The reason why I'm only giving them an A-minus is because I'm not really even factoring in Zion Williamson that much because he is the obvious selection, and if you don't take him, then you might need to get checked out. Uh, obviously, he is a little bit of a factor in this grade, but not as much as if it was a little bit more controversial. Then pick eight, Jackson Hayes. He is number 23 on my board. Not a big fan of him. Durability issues, wasn't as productive as people think he was. Very athletic, very solid defender, but production wasn't really there. Durability is not there, and he does not have a jump shot. So D minus, but him and Zion are going to be a nasty athletic tandem. I'm excited to see Alonzo throwing up lobs to both of them. Pick 17 to kill Alexander Walker. That's a solid pick. Giving it a B. B, B plus. Could have gone with either of those, but I decided to be a little bit more harsh. I think he'll have have a very nice role off the bench behind Lonzo and Drew Holiday. He can play the one as well as the two, and I think his versatility will be very nice for them. And then Marcos Lozuara Silva, a.k.a. DD, C+. Not great, not an awful international guy. And then I thought they got really good value for moving down four spots with the Hawks, getting pick eight, which was not a good pick in my opinion, pick 17, and then a future pick from the Cavs, plus unloading Solomon Hill's contract. So, Pretty nice trade for them there. The Houston Rockets entered the draft with no picks, and they left the draft with no picks, so I'm not giving them a grade. So we're tempted to give him like a low C or something because they didn't trade Chris Paul, and I think they just need to get him out of there ASAP. But I'm not, so no grade for the Rockets. Last but certainly not least, we have the San Antonio Spurs. They get an A-. Another nice draft from Pop and the crew. Starting off at pick 19, Luka Shamanic from Croatia. Very long, lean wing, pretty athletic, has a nice jump shot. He's a little bit raw, but I think he is talented enough to play in the NBA right away. Pick 29, a talented wing in Keldon Johnson. That gets an A. Very solid selection. He looked like a top 10 pick back in January. Sort of fizzled off towards the end of the year, but I think that's a very nice selection for the Spurs. Extremely good value. And then pick 49, Quindary. Weatherspoon out of Mississippi State. 
Solid combo guard, nothing too special, but not an awful pick, so I'm going to give that a B-. minus. That'll do it for my draft grades. Hope you all enjoyed. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you happy with your team's draft? Are you mad with your team's draft? And as always, have a good one. I, I, I